to the Institute of Corning Lancashire branch technical presentation um, from Trimble on Smart Hall. Uh, we just thought we'd have a, a couple of seconds just to have a chat, see if there was anybody available to um, on the calls. We're all getting used to dialing into webinars and being receptive rather than communicating. And part of the Institute of Corning for me was always networking. Um, so there was just an opportunity just to have a chat and see if there was any conversations about technology in the workplace. Um, so I don't know if anybody wants to contribute and let us know if they've used any technology. Um, I'll start picking on people at random. So Julian, who was in your room? So I'll have um, Brian and Stephen Lashley uh, from the uh, UAE, and they are actively looking for um, looking at different technologies to to measure and uh, measure performance and productivity. So uh, hopefully they're going to find this presentation useful, and uh, it's I think it's going to be very timely for them. Fantastic. What were you, Sarah? Who was in your room? Apart from the presenters. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I left out on. So we had uh, Rob from Birkin and we also had Gary from Aggregate Industries who were both kind of quite enthusiastic about what was going on in their organisations with regards to how technology was being deployed at the minute. Fantastic. I'm going to hand over now to the team from Trimble um, and they can give us a presentation. So Tim Bannister from uh, Trimble. Um, Tim, it's all over to you. I'm Tim Bannister. Uh, I have been with Trimble for around eight years. Um, used to be based in Auckland, New Zealand, and been back in the UK for a couple of years now. Uh, I was the product manager for the Trimble Smart Hall system when it was launched earlier this year. Um, and I now moved to the Trimble Global Consulting Team um, based here in the UK, um, where I uh, support um, key accounts and large projects um, with the implement implementation of, of Trimble technology specifically um, focused around load right. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, today I'll be going through the Trimble Smart Hole um, product and solution that we I'd say we released earlier this year. So I wanted to kick off um, by talking about the problem that we're trying to solve uh, here, so the problem is essentially one of productivity in the load haul fleet. Uh, so the load, load haul fleet essentially is one of the key components in um, aggregate operation for supplying, obviously, the crushers, and obviously mass haul and, and moving the the cut and fill material. But often there is very little data available to understand what exactly the uh, the machines are doing in the load haul operation. That may that data may be pretty poor um, because it's often reliant on uh, operators recording it manually, um, and it's often out of date um, because it takes a long time for these manual record sheets um, often to be collated together uh, into a usable format. So this real lack of data is quite a big problem in understanding how the load hole fleet performance is affecting your site and your productivity. What often happens is we, gener we tend to generalize um, around what the problem is. In, in aggregates, that gen tends to focus around the, the primary crusher. So, so that's seen as the bottleneck. Um, and you can the primary crusher will always be the bottleneck. It's the, the limit of how much material you can get through it is going to be the limit for your your operation. Often, however, that isn't the case. Uh, it's something that's happening in the load haul fleet that's that's the limiting factor of your production. Or it could be the the weather uh, has caused the roads to become slippy, and therefore your whole fleet becomes slower, uh, and therefore your your tons per hour to the crusher becomes less. A again, similar in in construction where often the loading machine is, is considered the, uh, the limitation of the bottleneck in the mass haul operation, uh, when often it can be other factors, including cycle times, the type of material that you're moving, that can all affect what's happening with that load haul operation. Looking at some of the... So this is a um, Chartered Institute of Building survey uh, that was completed in 2016. And, and in this survey, a number of... Uh, People in the construction industry were asked uh, several questions around what caused delays in their projects. 
So 78 of people that responded to this survey believe that haulage delay impacted on the completion of, of, of these projects, uh, which is quite a high number. So haulage delay is obviously impacting these kind of projects in a big way. And 41% of the respondents also thought a lack of accurate data about the progress of the project was also causing them delays as well. So we look at the chart here on the right. This shows how records are kept from this survey around the, the haulage the load and haul process. So what we can see is, in fact, 94% of the the way that these uh, mass, the way that the load haul process is recorded is all done manually, and this creates a big problem, obviously, with accuracy. Um, how do you ensure that the operators are recording these loads correctly, these load counts correctly on this this manual? You know, how do you process all of this this paper records? Where do you keep it all? How long does all of that take? So when we have the information available to use, um, and those are all big problems that, that basically don't allow you to look into the load haul process and, and try and improve it. So what's this costing the industry? Well, the lack of visibility is costing billions. So this is from a, another survey, um, and it was looking at basically how much of the, uh, the employees' time in the construction industries were taken up by doing unproductive or non-optimal activities. Um, and the feedback came back as that amounts to about 35% of employees' time doing non-optimal activities. So what's an non-optimal activity? Um, this could be looking for project data information that isn't available because either it hasn't been collated yet or it's not been shared around the company. Uh, conflict resolution, again, could be anything around conflict, around lack of information, um, people believing different things, and obviously dealing with mistakes and rework. So often rework is complicated by the delay in, it, in the time it, it takes to identify that, that um, the problem has occurred. So again, you know, mistakes are, are heightened by the fact that uh, information is not available. So exactly how much is that costing the construction industry? Well, in the UK here, you can see that that the the industry spending forecast in 2018 was about 353 billion. Um, so if we equate that to the non-optimal activities, we're looking at a 48 billion dollar loss in basically wages of, of people doing suboptimal activities. So it's costing energy a huge amount. So here's some quotes. I'll, I'll read the quote on the right, which I think it explains quite well um, some of the problems that some of these guys are having. So the quote is, I, say, I, I will say it's gotten better than it used to be, but it could still be better. A lot of time could be saved if I could just get the information I needed from my laptop instead of asking someone in the back office for it and having to wait an hour or a day for them to get back to me. So that was, that was from a superintendent from a commercial construction industry. And, and that says a lot about some of the problems and, and why it's costing so much money. Uh, the data is just not there for people to understand what's happening on the sites in terms of productivity and production. And, and that makes it very difficult to improve um, what you're doing. So some of the ways we can tackle that is with real-time information. So why is real-time important when it comes to things like uh, data of load and haul fleets? Uh, well, it's important for a number of reasons. Firstly, real-time data can create aware, uh, awareness and a culture of improvement in, in your company. So we've, we've seen instances where we've stuck TVs up in break rooms uh, in quarries where they could have a live dashboard of information that's coming from the machines um, and, and the processes that are happening on the quarry. And what we've seen on those sites is that the, the operators, you know, really get invested in, in making sure that their numbers are where they should be. If, if they see something that isn't quite right, they speak up uh, and, you know, let the manager know why they think that production has dropped. 
So it really creates uh, a culture of improvement and everyone that everyone can get invested in. Also, um, actual insights. So by having, by having live widgets and, and graphical information, it's much easier to be able to gain insight of what's happening on your site rather than looking at old data, um, which perhaps you've forgotten what you were doing at that particular time. Transparency is another key one. So all the data being available to everyone um, so that everyone can see, see what's happening. Again, that allows people to chip in um, where they can help out, but it also makes everyone accountable um, for what's happening on site. Real-time information, obviously, I guess it needs to be said, but um, you know, being able to see everything in real time really gives you a much greater ability to improve what's happening because you know exactly what you're doing or what you're supposed to be doing. And if you can see something isn't happening as it's supposed to be, then it's... Um, easy to take action and correct that before it becomes a bigger problem. A part of that is identifying negative trends in the data. So one of the, the, the real good thing about real-time data um, and dashboards is that you're able to see um, negative trends where your productivity is, is falling off. And that obviously that, that can push you into action to make sure that you can reverse that negative trend and make sure productivity is kept as high as possible. Measuring efficiencies and inefficiencies. So this is a big one around the load haul operation. Often not much is known about it. You've just got the, the load sheet, which is you know manual ticks of individual loads. And that may be as much information as you've got. Um, but being able to dig down into things like haul road speeds, cycle times, um, loading times, uh, looking at the, the flow of material on a site can really um, give you a much greater understanding of what the problems are with your, your haul cycles uh, and your load haul operations uh, and enable you to implement process improvement around those issues that you have. And lastly, goal progress. It's very difficult to set goals if you've got little or no information, which sort of enables the load haul operation to sort of go off the rails because you don't really know what's happening. So with the detailed real-time information, you're able to set goals for your operation and ensure that those are met or identify why reasons why those, those goals aren't being met. So the future is real time. Um, this is a graph of the uh, global, global data sphere, and it uh, shows basically how much of the, the global data sphere uh, in terms of percentage is taken up with real time data. And in 2020, we can see that that accounts to about 15 to 20% of the global data sphere. And by 2025, um, it will account for 30% of the, the global data spheres, um, data. So 30% of all the data in, on the internet will be real-time information. And we can see the growth of that real-time data has been you know, very large over the last 10 years. The, the real-time data usage has increased fivefold over that time and is predicted to increase uh, you know, another fivefold um, over the next five years as well. So what is Trimble Smart Hall? Trimble Smart Hall is basically the combination of loader and haul machine data that's then collect, collated in the cloud and run through several smart algorithms um, to combine that data into one detailed and um, accurate data set. This data set they can then be viewed in real time uh, so that the production from those machines can be monitored through the Insight HQ um, Insight dashboard, which can drive obviously the increased production and productivity of those machines whilst limiting obviously the costs of the unproductive activities. We also have cloud-based reporting that allows you and the managers of the operation a detailed look into exactly what's happening around the load haul operation and being able to dig down in, in, the, in that data to identify where the bottlenecks and inefficiencies of the operations are occurring, how well you're utilizing your fleet and take actions to improve on all of those things.
So we also have a uh, quick video, and I'm not going to play this now, but please feel free to go and look at it on YouTube. There's a link here if you just search for Smart Hall, Trimble Smart Hall in YouTube, it should be the first result. Um, and that gives you a little bit more of an overview of the solution. So what does real-time reporting look like with Trimble Insight? So this is the Trimble Insight dashboard, and these are some of the widgets uh, that we've got designed around the, the load hall operation. So one of the, the good things about this solution is this playback bar that you have at the bottom. So we're able to play back through the data of the, all of the, the day, and you can obviously choose which day you want to look at. You can play this at different speeds, or you can uh, scroll to a, a particular time of interest that you want to look at. So, so this enables um, obviously both live viewing of the data um, and to be able to go and look back um, at problems that may have happened earlier in the day to, so you can see what was happening with your machines at that point in time. Uh, you can look at a lot of different aspects of the data. So here we have some um, widgets around geofenced hall totals. Um, so this is looking at uh, material hauled to the primary crusher. Um, so we can obviously geofence the dump areas of the whole fleet to look at where the material is flowing. So we can see, you know, how much material is flowed to the primary crusher, how much material is, is flowed to the feedstock um, surge pile, for instance. We can view all of the whole fleet totals in one snapshot um, so we, that we can compare the totals against each other. Um, here we have number of cycles and the total tons of those machines, which gives us a good idea of how those machines are performing, um, whether any machines aren't performing as well as others. We also have some map reports. Here we can see machine interactions. We can also identify the locations of machines, and so that's locations of machines in live real time. Uh, and also playback at any particular time of the day where those machines were, what the interactions were. Uh, we also have on here a heat map, which can either highlight slow or fast areas of the whole road. Um, so for instance, here we've got it looking at areas where the machines are traveling under five kilometers an hour. So we can see particular areas of the whole road that might be a problem, like causing problems with slow speeds. You can see here there's a, a very sharp corner, which the truck's having to slow down uh, up this hill here as well, um, several slow spots, and obviously around the loading areas. We can also look at several aspects of the data together on, on a chart. So uh, this, the chart here, up here in the top right is looking at the primary crusher run rate. Um, so this is obviously coming from a belt scale on the primary crusher, um, but the little dots at the top are looking at the, the feed into that crusher by the load haul fleet. Um, so each one of these dots is a dump. The blue dots are a dump into the primary crusher and the yellow dots are a dump into the primary surge pile. So you can see basically how much material is going to the primary crusher versus a surge pile, for instance, to see how that's affecting your productivity. Again, here we can, we can look at crusher run rates and an excavator loading as well. Another look at some of the other activities there. Um, so we've got some uh, widgets around, around the primary crusher production. So we can set in here shift modes, products, uh, target burn rates um, and target production values. Uh, we can look at uh, things like startup times, stop times, black belt and production. We can set up target widgets to see how much we've produced according to our target. We can monitor progress versus targets. So here you can see this burn up chart. You've got your, your target line for the primary crush of the secondary crusher versus what the actual secondary crusher has done. Uh, and we can see how those compare to make sure you're, you know, if you're above production, then it's okay. If you're if you're below target, then maybe you need to take action. But we can also look at things like delays. So again, for for the crushers, uh, being able to identify when you've got black belt time and stop time, um, and also adding reasons to these. 
And here on, on, the, on the map again, this is looking at a slightly larger picture of the site. So this is looking at whole, high whole road speeds. So if you wanted to look at, say, instances, uh, if you were interested in instances of speeding, you could, you could set this report to look at speeds over a certain uh, uh, speed, and those would be highlighted on the map. So you can identify, obviously, areas where the trucks might be operating unsafely, and again, be able to take action um, where necessary to prove that. So um, if that's a general overview of Trimble Insight, I think it gives you a good idea okay. of the usefulness of the, the live information in being able to identify negative trends and obviously um, correct those uh, as soon as possible. The other platform we have is the Insight HQ reporting platform. Uh, that, that contains a reporting suite that has a number of different reports that, look, that enable you to look a bit deeper into the data. Um, this is good for things like exception, exception analysis, bottleneck identification and quantification. Uh, and you can also get reports emailed uh, and download them directly. Uh, so they can be emailed out daily, weekly, monthly, um, however you need to get that information. And we also have a, an API from, uh, from this platform, which enables you to push this production data into any existing platforms that you might have or, or might prefer to view the data in. So Insight HQ and Insight have a number of good functionalities that enable to do, you to do several things. I think some of the things that are obviously key to the smart hole system are production tracking. So being able to identify what you're producing um, so in terms of, of uh, we do this in terms of, of geofence production so that you can set benchmarks. You can also identify where you haven't produced as much as you, sh you wanted to and try and, you know, increase that if you have to, to get back on schedule in terms of production or mass hall productivity. We've got the material audit. So with mass hall, we've got the load matching report which shows the combined haul truck and excavator data. So this is a, a basically dig to dump tracking of material. Uh, so you've got the, the asset ID on there. So the, the actual truck that was loaded, when it was loaded, um, the geofence location, uh, what payload it was loaded with by which machine, the number of buckets that went onto that truck, when that truck dumped and in what geofence, how far did it travel, what material was loaded onto it. And all of that information can give you basically a full audit from when the material is dug out of the ground, from which machine, to which load truck it was loaded on, and where that material went. So again, that, that report is, is Excel downloadable. You can also highlight things like over and under loading, if that's a problem on your site. Improving efficiency is a big one. It's a big target of, of all of the reporting that we do. So improving loading efficiency is, is one of the key aspects of smart haul. So in some instances, it, it makes very good sense to make sure that you're getting the maximum load on each truck. And we can do that, obviously, with the target loading on the excavator scale, uh, which makes it very easy to make sure that each truck is getting the maximum load on and you're getting the most productivity you can out of your load haul fleet. We can also highlight things like bottlenecks within the haul cycle. So here we have a haul cycle report on the right, which just breaks down the haul cycle into several components. And you can look at, you know, where's the whole truck wasting its time? What unproductive activities are we getting in that in that general haul cycle? And, and what can we do to improve that? That may be, you know, traffic management on the site. That might be, you know, improving what the loader operator is doing in terms of loading time, et cetera. So, yeah, all of that information uh, really allows you to get an idea of where the inefficiencies lie um, so that you can implement process improvement from the information that you're getting from the load haul fleet. Now, thirdly, one of the things we're trying to do is obviously maximize the utilization of the haul fleet. So, again, we have a number of, of things on both Insight and Insight HQ. Um, widgets and reports that look at look at utilization times of machines. Uh, so here, for instance, we have some information about start first load times. So often it's important to know uh, not just when the machines are starting up, 
but when they're when they're starting to actively um, produce or work on that site so we get the start time we get the first load time last load time and end times and we can look at for instance how well that machine's being utilized through the day how much stoppage time has it got in each of the individual hour of that day for instance uh, we can also look at for the excavator things like product productive time um so how how much of the time was spent loading trucks and how much was doing other activity or having to delay while it was waiting for trucks, et cetera. We also have reports around operational delays where the operators can actually input some of this uh, operational delay information. But a lot of this information is captured automatically so that it doesn't rely on the operator having to press a button to know that you've obviously had some delay. Generally, it's just he presses the button to identify the reason for that delay. So how does the Trimmall um, smart hole system work? Uh, so this is an overview of the hardware. So we have the X2350 scale system on the excavator that works with four angle sensors that are mounted on the arm of the excavator in the bucket, uh, as well as one on the one on the machine itself. Uh, we also have two pressure transducers mounted into the hydraulic lifting ram, which enables us to weigh each bucket that's lifted from that machine. On there, we also have an accurate GPS and modem, which we can then push that data out um, to our uh, cloud database. On the truck, we've got something much more simple, basically a one sensor on the, the back of the machine that's looking at the angle of the tray, plus some other things around accelerations, et cetera. Uh, and in the cab, we have a, an indicator giving the operator some basic information about the number of holes, for instance, that he's done. Um, we have GPS and modem in the cab. So it's quite a simple system on, on the whole truck. There's no weighing done on the whole truck. All the weighing's done on the excavator. So what do we do with that information? So we get the two streams of information from the excavator and the whole truck. And that is brought in via the modems into the, into the cloud, uh, where we combine that information with uh, using the smart hole algorithms um, to create a much more accurate and detailed data set around the load hole operation. Um, so, so, so what this really enables us to do is get a lot more information about the machine interaction uh, that would normally require an operator to input that information. So we can match up which truck was loaded, the material, how many buckets and where that, where that truck went to without any input from either operator to get that information. So what are some of the features that really make the smart hall system stand out against some of its competitors' existing methods of, of tracking load hole um, productivity? So really it gives you a, a very detailed insight into what the actual productivity of each individual machine is and the whole operation. So you get a lot more detailed information and obviously live information than say you would from manual um, recording and uh, a lot of only standalone systems. So for instance, going back to the beginning of the call, um, when we talked about what was the bottleneck, often somebody will put a scale on the loading machine because they, that's perceived as the bottleneck, and that will then give them some data about the load hole operation. However, it's only part of the picture. This gives you the full picture of what each individual machines were doing, the interactions, and tracking the material as well, on how that flows around the site. Um, so it really gives you the data to be able to report on on progress and also improve what you're doing. You've got the the detailed analytic analytical tools. So again, the real time insight dashboard um, that allows you to lo look at all that information graphically in real time. You've also got the the Inside HQ detailed reports that enable you to dig really down really down into all aspects of the data to you know, how fast were the whole trucks going? How much uptime did I get out of this machine today? How much working time did I get out of it? 
things like that. One of the key differentiators is uh, the automated collection of data uh, for the accurate and rich data set. So often, um, you know, with these, uh, with these electronic uh, information systems, a lot relies on the operator input. And if that operator input isn't perfect, then that can often create problems around the data. Um, you know, it brings up questions of whether the data is accurate, whether you can use it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so smart is really designed to be as automated as possible so that, you know, little or no error is introduced into the data set. And we also have within the algorithms way to spot bad data and correct it um, so that your, your data set remains accurate um, and you can trust it. An example of, of uh, what an operator would normally have to do is, for instance, uh, an excavator, if you had a scale on an excavator and you wanted to track which machines it loaded with what product, an excavator operator may have to um, select a truck out of a list um, to say it was loading that. It may then have to select a, a target loading weight, you know, load the truck, have to select a product, and then he'll have to clear that truck accurately. Uh, so that's several button presses per machine um, that he has to do accurately to get accurate data. With Smart Hall, as long as he's got the correct product selected, we can just match it up all automatically and the operator doesn't have to press a single button. And obviously, further benefits from that is a move away from manual tabulation of data, no more tally sheets, no more chasing operators, no more operators just, you know, forgetting to do it and then writing down 10 loads on the tally sheet. Another good feature of the system, obviously, it's it has mixed fleet support. Um, so it's, it's not reliant on any OEM. And obviously, that this is sets it apart from any OEM um, scale is the fact that it can be fitted to uh, pretty much any ADT or rigid body off highway truck uh, and any maker model of excavator. Uh, and all of the data that's then supplied in one location uh, and one database um, for you to get access to. You don't have to go through all the different OEMs to get the information that you want. And lastly, you know, one of the one of the key problems with some of the scales out there is is a calibration time. Um, so, if for instance you have truck scales on each truck, you have to maintain those calibrations. Um, so, if you've got a fleet of a hundred haul trucks, you know that's quite a lot of cost and time in maintaining calibrations of those machines. With the smart haul system, obviously we've only got this calibration on the excavator, and we combine obviously the weight with the haul truck information um, in the back end. Uh, so it really cuts down the amount of calibrations that you have to have to support in your whole fleet uh, and also allows us to have a much uh, quicker installation of the the whole truck system contains no invasive sensors um, it's simply a matter of wiring the the sensors in and away you go uh, in two to four hours so not much um, not much unplanned delay time for the machine, downtime for the machines, and much easier to maintain in the long term. So here's some overview screens. So again, looking at that dig to dump audit trail. So these are bits of the information you get. Obviously the, the cycle start and end time, the material that was loaded on, the tonnage of, uh, that was loaded on, the number of passes that were operated by um, the excavator, the geofence load and dump locations, the cycle time, and we've also got the cycle segmentation and cycle speeds, and uh, obviously the distance as well of travel. So it's um, a full set, a full audit of information about what happened in that cycle. No more manual tracking of load haul operations, no more tally sheets. Um, have the, you know, you've got the data there um, at your hand. Uh, you know, you can view it on your phone, on your laptop. You know, you've got the data there. You don't have to chase people up for tally sheets. Um, and it's accurate data that you can trust. 
again, just to highlight, obviously, what we're trying to do in terms of optimizing, making the, the whole, whole cycles as, as efficient as possible. Um, so here you have a typical whole cycle. Um, you might queue to load, load. You might bun have bunching um, and queuing at the dump areas. Um, and with a you know a manual tabulation, you'll have no idea about what happens here. And you can you can measure it from time to time, but this is a very dynamic thing. It changes all the time depending on see the conditions, number of machines, how the operators are feeling. So th I mean, this is something you know with Smart Hole that you can track all of the time, and you can make sure that you implement process improvement around the whole cycle to make sure that you've got you know as optimized the whole cycle as you can have as often as possible. Again, there's a few safety features as well around the the system, so you could you can identify obviously areas of speeding. There's a few other things on the machine as well that alerts the operators. Um, so there's a rollover alert that alerts them to cross slope, a tray up alert whilst moving with the bed up, and obviously the speeding alert as well, which alerts them to the speed limit on the road. So yeah, smart hole, smarter decisions. You know, what we're really trying to do and give you, give you guys is, is those real-time KPIs that help you improve what you're doing. Fleet and resource optimization, making sure that you know the machines you've got uh, are working as hard as they should be, and you're getting the productivity that you want out of them. Um, capital decision making, um, so being able to um, obviously use the data to make longer term decisions about your site um, or your business. And materials management, having that full audit, accurate audit of where materials flowing to by being able to identify whether you know there's any material flow that you don't want contaminated material etc which gives you a full picture of what's happening on your site yeah our view of um, some of the features and benefits so <coughs> the the automated payload assignment reducing that operator interaction uh, removes operator error and provides you the, the richer data set also enables you to not have the most skilled load right operator that you've got on the excavate all the time. You don't have to worry about, you know, him pressing the right buttons and being trained in the system. The system should take care of most of it in itself. Identifying bottlenecks again with, with uh, progress and production. So again, be able to dig down into that data and really look at what's causing the problem at any particular time and how that changes uh, over time. Maximizing the utilization of those machines and so making sure that they're starting when they should be, that you're getting the productivity while they're working that you, you know, you're expecting. Improving the efficiency of the load haul operation, making sure the trucks are fully loaded, making sure the, the cycle times are at what you expect and that you've not got um, excessive stoppages, et cetera, or, or slow haul speeds. Uh, tracking the project or production uh, during a shift in real time. Um, so making sure that, you know, you're meeting your targets without finding out, you know, a month later that, oh, you didn't do very well that day. Tracing all material. Um, so again, um, being able to trace all, all material movements on site. You know, that could be from a blast um, to a crusher or, or it could be um, contaminated material on a construction site and alerting operators to hazards such as speeding, rollover, tray up. Yeah, so, and, and that's a bit of a, an overview there. I won't go through this, um, this was running out of time, but uh, I'll open the floor up to questions. Cheers, Tim. Thank you very much. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, feel free to put them into the chat uh, function or just unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, a couple of ones that have come through. So just a comment for me, first of all. Um, please, can you introduce me to the truck driver on haul truck number five? Because he's got 50% more production than anyone else on the team. <laughs> so um, I need to know his name and number. Um, the second one was, can the technology help with mobile crushing? Um, so smart holds uh, based around the load haul operation, which generally um, involves obviously loading machine and haul truck. Uh, the dashboard, obviously, um, Trimble Insight dashboard uh, enables you to display um, information from crushing machines as well. 
Um, so we've got systems, conveyor systems that can be mounted to mobile crusher units um, that will be able to put information into our into our reporting. Yeah. Um, so um, yes, we we can um, we can um, display uh, mobile crushing data within our systems, um, uh, and we can obviously link that to um, uh, the load and haul operation to feed that crusher. Right, thank you, Tim. I've just seen Rob's uh, smiling face there. Rob, you know what, you're frowning a little bit, Rob, but smiling, I'll do me, that's it. Um, I could have answered that question myself because we did a Cleveland trial uh, with the technology on the um, CAT and it was it was fantastic to do that a couple of years back. So um, definitely helps there. Um, can the system also monitor fuel efficiency? So can it pick up fuel efficiency from any um, sort of um, manufacturer install systems or any alternative systems? So at the current time, no, we're, we're focused around productivity um, and utilization at this current time. Um, but that's something we'll be looking at in the future um, to add. Um, but yeah, at the moment, no. Uh, so I'll give you a, a fleet management comment on that one. Um, you will be able to find out what your idle usage is and your loaded usage. And there's not a lot of difference during the course of the day. And what you can do with the Trimble system is see how much you're idling and how much you're, you're driving. Um, so by yep. using them, David, you should be able to pick it up. If that helps. Yep. Um, any other questions from anybody? Yeah, I've got one. It's Phil Gerrish. Hi, Phil. Um, how are you doing? Very good, thank you. I'm just wondering, can it link in, uh, or can it be linked into the geological model, particularly for grade control? Uh, so at this current time, uh, not, but that's something we're looking at within Trimble um, to link up to some of our existing solutions. Um, so at the moment, no, but um, in the future, we expect to be able to link it into, you know, some of the other Trimble systems that, that specifically look at, you know, those things. Thank you. Great question, Phil. Uh, go on. Yeah, go on, Rob. Yeah. Um, just on, you were talking, uh, Tim, about um, being able to identify speeding on site. Yep. Um, is that something that you can actually directly link into a, a limiter, say, on, on, the, on the actual equipment? Or is it just data capture? So that's not something we've done. Um, so obviously we do display the speed on the, the equipment itself. And we do have... Um, we do have ways to obviously send a signal out from the indicator um, that's mounted on the, on the system, but we, we haven't done any limiting um, or, or, or safety aspects in that sense with the system as of yet. Okay. I mean, my, my concern if it was going down that way would be that there are various other things that can affect speed on a site on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, I would say, is there an opportunity for um, the operator, if he was speeding, to be able to input into the system to possibly give a, a reason why, you know, like weather can create a, a lot of variables. Oh. Yeah, and I think that's obviously part of it. You know, we're not trying to uh, obviously, you know, it's not, we're not trying to hit the operator with a stick. We're just trying to offer the information to the managers of the site to let them know what's happening. So if there's a lot of speeding happening, then they're able to obviously bring that up with the operators. Um, the operators have a chance to obviously explain why they're doing it. Often it's a case of, you know, just trying to, you know, get production as fast as possible. Um, even if they don't quite understand that, you know, driving around the site as fast as you can, you know, doesn't necessarily increase production. Um, you know, often it could just cause bunching and, you know, fuel usage issues um, that are costing the site money. Okay. Thank you. I have a question, please, if I may. Yeah, absolutely. This is Brian. Um, the data that's captured by the unit, let's say the tonnage um, by the excavator, can that data be exported to other systems outside of the Trimble? such as fleet dispatch systems, for example, or, so, or semi-autonomous systems? Uh, so we have an API um, that enables you to uh, send the data out of inside HQR cloud base uh, database into another system. If, if um, uh, you know, you want to view the data in another operating system, 
Uh, there is also ways that we can um, send data directly from the indicator in the cab to another onboard system, for instance, um, as well, if that was something you're interested in. That's clear, thanks. Cheers, Brian, thanks for the question. Anybody, any more questions? It's all gone quiet. So um, thank you very much, Tim um, from Trimble. Um, absolutely fantastic. Julian's just put his contact details on there um, in terms of uh, Halomec for the UK. Halomec are the dealer for Trimble in the UK or the distributor for Trimble in the UK. Julian, do you want to introduce yourself while you're, you're sat there wrapped up warm? I know you're down south. <laughs> it's cold down there. But. Absolutely, in the prosperous south. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for joining the webinar. I hope you found it all of, uh, all found it of interest. Uh, and thanks, Tim, for, for presenting it. Um, if you, yeah, if anybody wants to go into a little bit more depth and, and perhaps look at the commercial aspects for this technology and and other the other exciting stuff that we're doing in the quarrying sector, then feel free to um, to drop me an email and we can we can arrange to uh, to have a chat offline. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, just uh, thanks for, thanks for giving every time and, and joining us. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Julian, uh, for joining us. Thanks, Tim, for the presentation. And thank you to everyone for joining us um, and also to Sarah and the Institute of Quarrying for uh, facilitating hosting it through Zoom. So thanks very much, everyone. Um, it's been fantastic to see you all. And um, we've been Lancashire Branch Cheery Vice. <laughs>